Thank you. Um, wow, well, we are live. Uh, welcome to the Board of Select Meeting. It is Tuesday, January 2nd. Will you join me in a Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that. Um, just quick introductions. To my left is our town administrator, Rebecca Oldham. Um, behind the scenes where you can't see him is our tech expert, Chris LaCorey. Um, way down all the way to my right is Selectman Ed Watson. Then comes Selectman Mark Parento and then Selectman Jason Naves. And so we're going to begin the meeting and at some point, um, our chair will show up and take over. So no pressure. I can handle this, I think. Do we have any public comment? There being none, um, we'll go on to the first discussion and possible vote. We have a field use permit for the Essex Premier um, under the name of Nicole Marisolo for the use of Shanahan Field for a soccer clinic July 22nd through August 2nd from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's open for discussion. I'll make a motion to approve the field use permit for Essex Premier for the use of Shanahan Field Soccer Clinic July 22nd through August 2nd from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Second that. It's been duly motioned and seconded. Do we have any additional discussion? Is um, well, this um, this is different than Groven Youth Soccer, correct? So I just scheduling wise, is it going to be a conflict between them or? So the individual that holds the clinics, she also is a part of Groven Youth Soccer, so they coordinate their efforts. All right, cool. Okay, and we do have a fee attached to this use. Yes, the fee for the clinics is associated with how many players they have sign up. So once she has a more final roster, we'll be able to, to calculate that accordingly. Okay, great. <coughs> Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Yep. It's unanimous, one absent. Okay. Um, next, oh, I'll have to leave the room. Um, Jason. <laughs> Would you like to take over the discussion for the Whittier Vocational Technical School Building Project? It was requested by Selectman Watson. As I am an employee of the Whittier Regional Vocational High School, I'm going to recuse myself and actually leave the room as I'm supposed to. Thank you. Selectman Watson, what have you got on Whittier Vocational Tech School Building Project? Well, uh, I, I wanted to, to keep this in the forefront so that people know about the upcoming vote on January 23rd, Tuesday. It's from 11 in the morning till 7 at night. Uh, absentee ballots are uh, okay, mail-in ballots are not. Uh, and this is, this is, uh, for approval of the, the new building at, at Whittier Bow Tech. Uh, when the superintendent was here the last time, or the only time, uh, I, I had asked about what the building would look like if, if they could uh, get a copy of the uh, plans, the building plans, put one in the library, one in, in the town hall, in, in uh, the 11 communities, uh, she thought that was a good idea. It never happened. Uh, and I, I think that that would have been, trans, trans, for transparency purposes, I, I think that would have been, would have been a, a good idea. Uh, and the, the quote from uh, the business manager at the Whittier Bow Tech was that uh, the, average, the average house in Groveland, 575000 uh, and it would impact $264 a year for 30 years. And, but that 
that same night that she was here, I think it was November 20th, we had paperwork from our Board of Assessors that about the average house in Grove one was more than 575. So I don't know where the Whittier Boat Tech got their 575, 575,000. And with the, with the tax bills that we just got over the weekend, uh, and I know I had uh, a lot of comments about it. Uh, it was, I think it was because of the, uh, the full impact of Pentucket, and maybe Rebecca can uh, uh, fill us in on that. The, the tremendous increase in the taxes. I know, I know the valuations went up, and, uh, uh, but I think it was also had to do with the uh, Pentucket, full assessment of Pentucket. That's correct. So there is two contributing factors to the increase in taxes, one being the $1.25 million override that was approved for uh, fiscal year 24, as well as the increase <coughs> to the assessments of each individual home. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, originally, originally uh, what we were told is that it, it needed to pass in in six of the 11 communities, but then we find out that's not the case. It's uh, a vote in all the communities. They take the total number of votes and combine them, and uh, it either passes or fails, 50% plus one. So uh, I know there is a uh, meeting coming up in new report on the 9th, I think it was the 9th, uh, to discuss this. Nobody reports have a problem with it. I did read in a past meeting, Rowley, uh, Newbury, I think it was Newbury, uh, some of their concerns that if, if this, uh, if, if the new building passes, that, and, and then an override follows and an override fails, it has to come out of their individual uh, town budget and I spoke before about this vote is in January I don't know when they'll schedule the override but this is after our budget is already set for the coming year so uh, that seems like it was uh, not not fair as well as the January 23rd the middle of the winter uh, 11 in the morning till 7 at night and people are used to people are used to voting uh, early voting not allowed uh, it was uh, no mail-in ballots other than uh, write-ins uh, I'm sorry other than uh, absentee ballots and but nobody seemed to be too concerned about that at uh, I, I just uh, I know some of the senior citizens, they're used to voting, uh, early voting in the last couple of years. Uh, it, it's disenfranchising them. And I, I think that uh, it should be passed on to Whittier. This isn't the right time to do it, the right time of year, January 23rd. Uh, the 11 in the morning till 7 at night, we have people at work. They may not be able to make it. It, uh, so if they can't make it, uh, they're not going to vote. And this is, it doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to be a very, uh, very publicized thing. It's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And I know that the superintendent went to Georgetown and another community, but I don't know the second one. And things got a little hostile and she walked out. She, she, she couldn't take the heat. Uh, there was another community, same thing. Uh, but I, I, I just would like to keep this in front of the people that you, you know, you're, you're talking about a $264 raise over 30 years and uh, with the tax bill that we just got, uh, I, I don't know too many people that can afford another $300 a year because you know that with the valuations going up, 575 isn't doesn't buy you too much of a house. Uh, so, I mean, does anybody else have any comments on it? Uh, 
Well, I think the hardest thing is the position that they put us in, because it's not just a new building. It's all the repairs and everything else that they need. And unfortunately, that's $376 million, which they get zero reimbursement for. I know in 2017, when they did the <coughs> feasibility study, because of all these repairs and required upgrades to meet codes, like sprinklers and ADA compliance, which the buildings in, that were done 50 years ago don't make, um, the feasibility study came back with the best option of a new school because of the, in the state money that was available, which would make the new school uh, approximately $100 million less than the repairs and upgrades. Unfortunately, the voting process is determined, the options are given to the school by the Massachusetts School Board Association. So there's not a lot of choices that we have. Um, I know that when Maureen was here, she did talk about how she discussed it with the town clerks to find out what would be best for them, the most cost effective way to get it done, um, to try to lessen the burden on the towns. And that's what they came up with. Um, either way, it's not ideal, um, especially given everything else that we had just approved. So I, I definitely agree with that, but it's definitely a tough spot that, uh, that we're in. Well, I, I, I kind of disagree with you as far as uh, that that was the best time to do it. Uh, Oh, I, I, don't, I didn't say it was or wasn't. I'm just saying that she discussed it with the town clerks of the towns, and that's who made that decision. But what they should have done, which made sense, but I know, I know common sense is out the window with things like this, but common sense-wise, wait a couple of months till our town election and put on a ballot at a town election. That makes sense, and that's probably why it doesn't, won't get done. That's why they, pro they, they scheduled it in January, because the town election made sense. Uh, well, I just think we need to keep this in front of the people. Hopefully, hopefully they vote uh, on that particular day, yes or no. Uh, but with the with the volume of votes in the city of Haverhill, if if Haverhill voted for it, uh, then it probably uh, has a good chance of passing because you will get some yes votes. I, I know West Newbury. They, uh, my conversation down there, I don't think they really cared whether it passed or not. Uh, and, but, but what also concerned was, was I, when I spoke with one of the city councils in Haverhill today, uh, he, he, was, he was a little concerned that uh, when they do want the override, he, he doesn't feel that it's going to pass. Uh, because they, they've got, in, in the city, they have a, a lot of expenditures coming up, uh, a couple new schools fire station. He doesn't think that an override for Whittier will pass. I think what, I, I think we should get a letter out to the superintendent of Whittier and sharpen a pencil, lower the cost. It, we, we don't need the Taj Mahal of buildings and uh, I'm afraid that that's probably what we're going to end up with and that we don't need. Uh, oh, I, I'd like to see us uh, Maybe even get the superintendent in here again. I know she probably won't go because I, I guess she's not going on the, uh, she was invited to the meeting on the 9th uh, in new report, but I guess she declined. Uh, and so Whittier is also having their own meeting on the 13th. What's that again? Whittier is also having their own meeting on the 13th. Yes, they are. But this is the woman that walked out in Georgetown. She couldn't take the heat in another, in another municipality. She couldn't take the questions when she, she walked out. Now she's not going to go to this meeting because she's afraid of the questions. So I, 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 think, uh, I think we should uh, make it known that sharpen your pencils and uh, cut some of the fr thrills out of the building. Uh, I'm all set, I think. How about you, Mark? Mm -hmm. Any input? Uh, I'll go get uh, Kathy.
Okay, I'm back. So we're going to continue with our agenda. I think the next on the agenda is the um, draft of the Personnel Policies and Procedures Manual. Um, our town administrator, Rebecca Aldham, is responsible for this fantastic document. Thank you. Wait. So we have not had an opportunity to address our personnel uh, policies and procedures manual since 2005, and a lot has changed in that time frame. So one of the goals that I've had since I took on my position is to go through that and kind of get a better understanding of where our shortcomings are, specifically in relation to the current Massachusetts general law and our current practices and making sure that we encompass all of the policies that we have in play. Um, some of the policies that we have have never really fully been integrated into the procedures manual, so they're kind of a, a side thought. Um, some of them have been misplaced over the years, so figuring out exactly what was approved and when it was approved and if it was revised and if we're following it and if we have the most updated amended version um, has been quite the struggle. Um, so my first pass at this was not necessarily to make any substantial changes. It wasn't to do anything that would alter the way that we operate. Um, I know that we still don't have a town administrator bylaw and we're taking that slow. So I did take that into consideration, but I did want to update some of the language that reflected whether or not we had a finance director and personnel director um, and take that into consideration. So the document that you see before you this evening is kind of a, a new document. It's not necessarily a red line version of our prior document because again, a lot of the information that we had was outdated, so it made a lot more sense and it was a lot cleaner and it was a lot easier to read when you just cut the entire section and replaced it with, you know, the updated uh, Paid Medical Leave Act or the Parental Leave Act or some of those other um, more statutory type of um, leave policies that we have in place. Then the other thing that I took into consideration were, again, things that we were already doing but not necessarily put them in writing. So you know, whether or not we had our, um, Mr. Chair, um, so whether or not we had our timekeeping and payroll and how we go through that procedure and um, attendance and emergency closings and, and those types of smaller practices that were already in place, but we just didn't have them written down and formalized. Um, so essentially that's the document that you have in front of you. It doesn't take substantial changes in the way that we operate and change anything. The only thing that it does that would be more substantial than all of the other changes is in relation to the accrual time. The accrual time as we had negotiated with some of our collective bargaining um, agreements was to go from uh, an hourly perspective so that that could be documented on their paychecks. The way that the personnel policies and procedures manual is currently written, it is done in days. So that can cause a lot of confusion when you're trying to say, okay, I want to take three hours of personal time, but you only have three days. So does that mean you get docked a day if you take just the three hours or do you go by the hours? So it just clarifies that in terms of hours so that it's concurrent with what we're currently doing and what we've agreed upon with our unions for uh, timekeeping of the accruals, et cetera. So, the first part of the process is to post it, to post the changes with the employees per the bylaw um, within 10 days and then hold a public hearing to allow for comments. I sent this out to all of the department heads and posted in the employee break room um, last week and I have received some comments thus far. Uh, the comments that I did receive are in written form and have been included in your packet this evening. Um, they come from Alyssa Lee. She's our director of the Council on Aging. She's currently here with us this evening. If you have any specific questions um, with what she had proposed in terms of some of the comments and edits that she would like to see, I don't necessarily see them as a, a deterrent for us from moving forward. I think there's a couple of things that we can address really easily, um, just changing the way it references either the human resource office or whether it mentions, um, you know, a remote leave as opposed to, you know, a, um, a um, telecommunications agreement. So little things like that. There's some other things that are a little bit more substantial that would require us to kind of get a little bit more involved in exactly what we want to see moving forward, such as a tiered uh, paid vacation policy and those types of incentives. Um, in the municipal world, it becomes a little bit more challenging for us to offer our employees those types of um, incentives because we just don't know what the budget is going to bring. Um, so not having a, a, a procedure in place to allow for us to take that into consideration can, can get us into trouble. Um, so something that just requires a little bit more uh, 
careful consideration as to how things are worded and how we can move forward with those. They're not, um, I think they're great ideas and I think that there's definitely things that I would like to take into consideration. Uh, but again, I think they require more of a review and that, in my opinion, would be the second phase of this process. The first phase is taking us from 2005 and bringing us up to 2024. And then the next phase would be to look at more substantial changes and some incentives that we could offer employees, et cetera. Um, and again, bringing the, the document uh, into more of what you're seeing in, in, in other municipal governments and try to, to you know, offer, again, incentives for our employees to feel like they're valued and that they're appreciated and that they would want to continue working here. So um, again, the first phase was to bring it up to the board to go over some of those initial changes. Um, <coughs> I'm happy to answer any questions with you. I had sent over the document last week. It has the uh, draft. It also has the former policy. And again, I just added the additional comments that I received today, uh, this evening. So I'm not sure if Mr. Chair, you wanted to <laughs> recap anything? On the, new, on the policies, <laughs> yeah. It says violations of federal or state laws. I mean, uh, didn't we violate federal law last week, last time? <laughs> you know, um, no, it, it's it's pretty much um, it's a comprehensive document. Um, are we going to get input from everybody on it? You're not allowed to gamble while on duty. You. Or on town premises. All right, no playing dice. Um, covers everything. I think one of the things that I, I do like the, the most about trying to do it this way as well is that if you look at it, each individual section is kind of its own policy and the way that it's structured. So we can review those as things come about and we can change those and we can be flexible um, to updating those as time goes on and as the board pleases as the personnel advisory board as it currently stands. So again, my, my goal was not to change anything in terms of authorities or anything of that nature, but really kind of just to, to update the document how it needed to be updated to, to reflect what currently happens and make sure that we have a way of tracking those amendments and tracking those changes so that we don't have to go through the process of saying, okay, wait, did we have a social media policy? Who did that? What was the updated version? What is the timestamp on that? Um, so it's, 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 again, it has a lot to it, but it's a lot of the same things we currently have too. The um, grievance procedure, is that, um, is that according to the law or is that, was that run by town council? It seems to me that a grievance uh, procedure or policy should be. Um, yes, the entire document was reviewed and edited by town council to confirm, confirm that it was in uh, relation to Massachusetts general law, federal law, as well as was just legal in general. So we're, we're meeting minimum guidelines. Yes. At a minimum. Yes, that is correct. Um, seems that's the most important thing in, in the whole document is if somebody has a problem, you know, how do they address it? You know, a lot of the other things are obvious. I make a joke about no gambling on the premises, you know, it's just uh, <laughs> don't need to tell people that. I hope not. <laughs> um, so does that mean you can't scratch your scratch tickets at your desk? <laughs> Maybe not. Anybody else? Edward. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether this is something that would be in the policies and procedures, but I, I know there have been talk before about uh, including uh, sick time, vacation time, et cetera, on the bottom of the uh, pay stub. Is that, that, that hasn't been done yet? It has been done. It has been, okay. And that was something that the board had originally discussed with the highway and the uh, water and sewer um, collective bargaining units and during their negotiations when I first started. Yeah, so that's kind of what started that trend. Yeah, important. Uh, it, it, just scanning over some of these uh, proposals or uh, requests, uh, whatever you, proper term is that we received tonight. Now, some of them certainly have merit, and I, I, I think we ought to uh, uh, <coughs> look those over and uh, look the policies and procedures over and see if some of those can't be incorporated. I agree, and like I said, Alyssa is here uh, this evening if the board has any specific questions or would like her to present maybe her um, recommendations. I'm, I'm sure she'd be willing to do that since she came all this way. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't have any specific. Uh, but uh, just a, a lot of it was, was uh, very well written, uh, did a nice job. 
And some of them certainly have merit, and they, they, should, be, uh, they should be looked at. Thank you. Mark. I'm good. I'm still halfway through it, so. <laughs> I mean, a lot of it just looks like, I mean, it's, it's, it kind of reiterates in layman's terms um, um, what the law is. You know, like, you know, you know the uh, application of the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act. I haven't read it, but um, someone's pregnant, they want to know their rights, they can go see you and ask what their rights are, right? Um, examples of prohibited discriminatory behavior. Well, can't discriminate against uh, protected classes. So I think it incorporates, you know, what the law requires, and uh, so people are aware if if they weren't if they weren't otherwise. Jason. Yeah, I know this uh, document had been redone in in around 2020 with uh, Denise, and it was tied to a bylaw. And when it went to town meeting, it was um, shot down, and then it was forgotten. And the biggest thing about getting this done and making sure it's compliant with the laws is to limit the potential for litigation against the town and costing the town money. Um, I, I read over a lot of the suggestions here and I agree with that. They do have merit and uh, it's something that we really need to discuss and, and begin to implement. Um, but I think for now the most important thing is to get this hearing underway and get the current proposed agreement, um, the policy and procedure manual implemented and updated so we can go back and enhance it over the next year or two with some of these suggestions as well as others. At the, at the point where we have a final draft um, and it procedurally what needs to happen, uh, Rebecca. So under the bylaw, the way that it's written is that the Board of Selectmen is a personnel advisory uh, board and so any amendments uh, changes or any um, again changes to the document must be posted 10 days prior to a public hearing process where the board will vote on whether or not to accept those changes uh, the bylaw itself um, there's some slight revisions that we could make um, but that in it of itself has to go through town meeting and go through the proper channels that the policy is under the personnel advisory board's um, authority. So they have the uh, ability to vote at a regularly scheduled board of selectmen uh, meeting to vote on any of those changes put forward. Town meeting would have to give us that authority. No, it's already um, under the law. You already had that authority. So the policy so my apologies. So the clarification is so that you would need to the propose the changes had been proposed in December 20 I think it was December 28th. So 10 days you would need to hold a public hearing to discuss those changes and then vote on those changes. So my recommendation would be at the next meeting we add this again to the agenda after having gone over at this meeting which gives us over the 10 days for people to review, read, ask questions, make comments etc and then at the January 16th meeting anybody who would like to make any comments or have any further discussion with the board may attend the meeting we can have those discussions or they could submit them to me prior and I can try and make those updates and provide the document for the board on the 16th if they want to make the vote on the 16th the board could do so if not they can continue it until the next meeting which would be the first meeting in um, in February nope excuse me January 30th so this board um, has authority over these policies and procedures, um, but we don't have authority over the change in the bylaw. Can you kind of reconcile the differences between our, our bylaw and, and what needs to be changed uh, uh, relevant to our, our changes in our policies and procedures? So not much, in my opinion, needs to be changed as, the, as part of the bylaw currently, um, because again, the, the policy itself was very, I, I didn't want to change much in terms of our structure and how 
things are done. It just wanted to update it to make it compliant. Um, so the bylaw really just, just says that the Board of Selectmen is the personnel advisory committee. They will take into consideration um, classification, wages, salaries, policies, et cetera. So it doesn't have any other authorities other than the authorities granted to the Board of Selectmen as the personnel advisory board to carry out those functions. It doesn't have any specific relation to the policy itself other than to dictate that you are the ones that have the ability to say yay or nay and how that goes about the 10 days the public hearing etc and what if town meeting didn't approve it then where would that leave us we have a non-compliant bylaw nope because i wouldn't suggest that we make any changes to the bylaw i'm only suggesting that we make changes to the policies and procedures and where again they are generic it's not necessarily substantial changes that would migrate into the territory of changing the general bylaw okay thank you kathy um yes thank you so i've spent several hours going through this um i truly like it um you know having been on committees in the town and now on the board of selectmen for my <clears throat> my second term i've seen um the kind of difficulties that arise when you don't lay these things out clearly um, when people don't know whether they can put something on a bulletin board or not, or when people don't know the procedure if you're not going to be able to make it to work, and when people don't know, and this isn't articulated in a clear manner, um, it becomes a little bit of chaotic affair, and um, uh, we've gotten complaints over the years about different things. Um, so this, to me, clarifies um, the chain of command on salary, this clarifies the confidentiality of um, people's personal information in the town hall, which I think is important. It clarifies um, people's right to, to work in an environment that is free from harassment and hostility, um, to be able to express their opinion and have it listened to um, when it comes to things at the workplace. I think that's really important. Um, I just, I guess an overall question I had is, I like everything that's in here. Um, and I think it was pointed out in Alyssa's um, letter too that we do have um, several situations where, um, example, in the fire department, we have a strong fire chief who appoints. Are the firefighters who are non-union covered under this personnel policy by the aspects of it? They would be, yes. Okay. Um, and then how about the Board of Health? They hire without us, right? That's correct. There's, a, okay. there's three. There's the fire chief as a strong chief. There's the board of health who hires their own staff as well as the um, council on aging hires their own staff. Okay. And so they would all though be covered by the, by the clarification and the protections of this personnel policy. Yes. Unless there's a contract or other agreement in place. Correct. Okay. That, that's the way I read it. Um, but then as far as the hiring and I guess firing as well right it, it would be left to the appointing authority the appointing authorities and okay. that's why in Alyssa's letter she had mentioned putting that in a chart of some sort to understand exactly where those authorities lie the appointing authorities lie and I think that was a great suggestion and I would like to incorporate that if I may oh okay okay Th that made a lot of sense to me um, I didn't oh I do see the use of his and her you can you could go to the they and them very easily I think if you wanted to um, to be completely inclusive, that's, that's a, a good idea. And I'm sure other good ideas will come forward, but from what I'm understanding right now, the process is it's posted. We're letting people, like Alyssa, comment, and thank you for that. And then we will review all the comments and any other changes. Do you have to keep posting it when you make any changes, or do we wait? I would share the revised copy with others so that they could see as okay. it gets revised and what's being revised as part of the copy that was originally shared back in December. Great. Well, well I thank you for doing this. Um, for those people that are just watching and wondering what we're talking about, this document is, <laughs> I'm going to go back to the, the thing. I forget how many pages. It, it's a lot of pages. It's, it's, uh, you know, and close to 100 pa pages long. 90 Nin pages. 90 pages long. Um, comprehensive. Certainly would have kept us um, from some of the difficulties that we've run into over the last 20 years or so if we'd had something like this so clearly written and so available to everybody to see so they can, if they need to, look up something if they're not sure about something. 
um, in the workplace. And we've hired, you know, many new workers, so I think this is a great time to, to get their input and to um, adjust this according to what we think is fair and then to move forward with it. Um, because we do want to attract the best and the brightest and we do want to keep the best and the brightest. And you do that by making the workplace some place they want to go work at. And you do that with clarification and policies. I mean, that's, that's the nature of the beast. And, and we haven't really had that. You know, we may have had a personnel bylaw, but it was kind of on a shelf somewhere. And I think this really puts it into play in the workplace. It's specific and it's fair and it's incredibly well written. So thank you. Appreciate all the effort I'm sure that went into this. That's it. Thank you. Sounds good. So I will look at this uh, document that Alyssa had provided a little bit more closely and incorporate the changes that I think that we can do very easily. And then um, we'll leave the others to the comment period where the board can discuss in more detail if they would like to include those as well. So our plan is to have a uh, public hearing at the next meeting. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. We will. What's up next? Do we have uh, appointment of the board? None. Approval of the minutes. Board of Selectmen meeting minutes, November 20th, 2023. Has everyone had a chance to read those? Yes, I've read them. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any discussion on the minutes? No? No way. No. Any discussion? Oh, no. I have none. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next up, we have older unfinished business. Does anyone have any? I didn't put that any down. <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> well, um, the trash contract limits um, trash to two barrels or use of the overflow bags. And I have received some comments from around town that this is not being adhered to. Um, I personally have seen instances where it clearly wasn't adhered to. And then I've seen a few places where people are using the overflow bags, not that many, but a few. And so I'm wondering, um, it is a contract. Um, we have restricted the barrels, but if they're going to pick everything up, it's almost like the contract doesn't matter, right? I'm not quite sure whether uh, the board would want, as part of this trash committee that we're working on, would you want us to discuss this and come up with some ideas? My thought was to contact waste management and talk to them about it as well. Um, but we do have a restriction on barrels, and um, clearly they're picking up more than two barrels around town. And it's expensive. It's costly. Uh, I think eventually when we go to a new contract, um, it's going to be restrictive, maybe more restrictive. So I feel that as a Board of Selectmen, we have an obligation <coughs> to, to get better information out to people so that they understand it better. Um, and I just wondered if board members wanted to weigh in on it at all. Um, I was hoping to bring it up the next time the trash committee meets. should be the last Monday in January. We missed December because of Christmas being on a... Monday and just kind of if you had any things or thoughts you can say them now or send them to me whatever or come to the meeting should we add it to the next agenda and, and will you have something from that committee to bring um, to we us we wouldn't have we will not have met before the 16th but if, if the Board of Selectmen wants to look at the trash contract, that section of it, it's, it's very clear that we have a limit. And it's clear what you're supposed to do if you have additional trash. I just wonder um, if we didn't do our due diligence getting everybody informed. There was a bit of a chaotic transition in this contract. We changed the routes. Remember, we had difficulties in the beginning that kind of overshadowed the whole contract. We got that straightened out. and. Now I'm just looking at a contract that's not being followed. 
Well, we can't deliberate without posting, so. Um, yes. I mean, I could put it on the next uh, agenda, or we can go to the following one, and uh, maybe, um, you know, as the uh, trash committee emiss emissary, and come back with some <laughs> some data, and just tell us, you know, what what what's been done, what okay. should what should be done, what should not be done, but you know, see if we can get some raw data on it. You know, if it's a random, you know, they picked up four barrels and. Maybe it's no harm, no foul, it's not material, but if it's a material issue, then maybe we address it. But So I think we wait until after your, uh, your meeting. Okay, so when we, we'll have it on the agenda in February then. I think so. Okay. Two, two meetings out. That sounds fair. Unless you think it's an emergency. No, no, this has been going on for a while. So <laughs> all right, then, I think uh, we just have to start taking um, just, some uh, steps to address it, that's uh, all. Just yeah. uh, let that committee know that we're going to put it on the agenda, and if anyone wants to attend, chime in, they can. Good. All right. Jason? No, I'm good. Mark? Good. Edwin? Well, I, I, I did notice last week it was uh, at the beginning of the, uh, which would be Monday routes, it would be because of the holiday, the two, it would have been Tuesday, either uh, a couple of houses were skipped at the beginning of the route or the people put it out uh, too late. Too late. And so it was double, uh, it was double this week, but you, know, you don't know whether it was, did they put it out too late or did they, did the guy in the truck uh, just go by and forget it? Uh, so that's, that's, that's hard to say, but if, if they get skipped, uh, actually it's gonna be double the next week. So it looks like that it, where they would normally put out two barrels because they were skipped, they put out four, which is, not their fault, and, but I, I don't see too many of those. We'll, we'll get the data, you know. I mean, if that we happens. put it on, um, you know, a month out, um, we'll have raw data, and uh, we'll see if it's material. You know, if it's uh, yeah, they skipped and then you double up, then it seems reasonable. But and we'll in addition, maybe we could find out how many actual bags are being sold, and uh, even like I know Nicole's has them. Uh, or did uh, Market Basket has them? Board of Health. Find out how many how many bags are being sold and uh, what uh, what we're making on them. There you go. We'll get it. I, I just don't see too many of them out there. We'll get the update. Thank you. Talk about trash in a month. Get our, get our viewership up. Like be standing room only. Mark, good. you good? I'm good. Mark. You sure? Don't you don't have any older, unfinished axes to grind? There's got to be a few. I put my uh, trash in my dad's barrel and, you know. All right, out with the old, in with the new. All right, what's up next? We have um, other items not reasonably anticipated at the time of posting. I forgot something, so I'll bring it up under selectment time. Anybody, Kathy? I mean, yes, there was a report of um, target practice being done at Center Street. I don't know if it's factual or not. There was a picture of it posted on social media. Um, so I, I know eventually we're going to develop this parcel. We're going to have something there. But right now it's kind of in a, an abandoned place. Um, but I do know that uh, children and animals and other things cut through there mosey around there. I, I would like to um, question whether we should uh, talk to the police department about putting some um, enforcement signs up so that they understand that this is not open land to go target practice on because it's dangerous. I would think people would know better, but evidently not. You gonna go talk to the police chief? <laughs> I can if you want me to. Sure. Free will. <laughs> Anyone can, right? Anyone can. See what he says, and you know, and if there's an issue, then we'll talk about it next time. Jason. I'm good. Mac, again. Oh, no, I'm good. Edward. Okay. All right. Moving right along. Town administrator time. Rebecca. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I don't really have too much to share with the board. Um, things have been very, very busy over the last two months, specifically with the budget. 
Um, so you should be seeing your final budget book as uh, requested by Friday. Um, we have a few leftover um, items that need to be updated as part of the digital budget book, but the final hard deadline is Friday. So that will be sent to you electronically. And then if there's any members that would like that printed out, I can go through the process of printing it out. Um, as I had mentioned, the original request did not have a lot of the final numbers that we see from a lot of our other obligations that we have, such as retirement, health insurance, um, some of the assessment data for uh, Whittier, uh, Pentucket, et cetera. Um, so those numbers are starting to come in a little bit more. Just today we received the allocation for Essex County Retirement. The total allocation for the appropriation that they had um, given us was 1,301,246. When you break that down between the light department, the water and sewer department, and the town's allocation, town allocation of the 69% of that total is about 897,859. That would be just about a 25% uh, increase over last year's budget number. Uh, that is quite a hit. Um, that was not something that we had factored into our original numbers. And again, as we had discussed at our prior meeting, uh, the budget as submitted and the revenues as defined at that point in time and as they still currently stand, we're looking at $121,580 shortfall. Uh, that doesn't take into consideration the most recent numbers from the retirement. So we're hoping that there'll be some overestimates that we had put in place that will help offset that. Um, we do have some other expenditures that we had proposed to level fund to um, just be smart about what we're expecting for future fiscal years, not necessarily just next fiscal year. So we just decided to level fund those items, but there might not be a need to provide funding for those items for fiscal year 25. So we do have some ways to, that we can, we can work with the numbers and, and decrease that a little bit, but it's not a lot. Um, and given the conversations that we continue to have as we did earlier with the Whittier School, um, I just want to make sure that people are aware that there are multiple votes that we need to take into consideration. Um, I had posted some information on social media for the voters and I hope that the board had a chance to review. So um, if there's any specific questions about that, I can answer them, but the vote that we're experiencing on January 23rd is to approve moving forward with the MSBA and not necessarily any debt exclusion override or anything of that nature. That would be a separate vote at a different time. Um, so those are really the only two items is just to say that we're still working on the budget and trying to figure out how we can balance meetings with the finance board are going to start um, within the next few weeks. And just again, to remind everyone that the Whittier school vote is a for the MSBA building, not necessarily any funding that would be tied to what we would need in order to balance our budget moving forward. Because it will be either an MSBA new building or it will be upgrades and code compliance, which is one or the other. The vote on the approval of the building without a funding source, is that what you're telling me? So you're essentially, yeah. <laughs> you're either voting to approve the MSBA new building or you're voting to approve them to assess us for capital upgrades and code compliance. That's really clear. <laughs> that's why at the last meeting we had talked about. How know, is that ballot question going to be worded? So that's why the one you that. You voted for repair the old building or are you voting for a new one? I mean, how are they going to clarify that for it's people? Just an, that's just a new one. So the sample ballot information is out there on the internet and it's just for the new building. Up or down on the new building? Yes. Okay. Kathy, any issues, questions for Rebecca? Um, well, I just had a question on that, the fair share letter, but maybe that should go on a future agenda. Um, because it seems like our fair share is really small. So it's based on the percentage of roadways and population. So it's a similar calculation that we have for our chapter 90 roadway. So this is um, in consideration of the billionaire, the millionaire's tax that they just passed yes. um, that last year. So they said that those monies needed to be allocated towards education and or um, public roads and transportation. And so that was the apportionment that they had put forward for fiscal year 24. And that is, as it says, based on local road mileage, population, and employment. So, so it says it's for education and roads, but they've decided just to put it on roads and to allocate based on our 
percentage of roads. So a small town with fewer roads gets like nothing. You know, right? Is that what's happened? That's it's what's kind happened. of the same with the Chapter 90. For Chapter 90 monies, we really only take annually in about 200000 uh, for to go back into a roadway project. Right. Roadway projects cost millions of dollars. But if they allocated it towards education, how would we get our share of it for education? It wouldn't be on road miles, right? We haven't heard anything about how they're distributing the money for education. The only information that has been released at this point in time is the fair share apportionment, and that was for the roads. They had not mentioned anything about education. Can we complain? <laughs> I don't think it's a fair share. I think it's a, a, a minuscule sum of money. Did you? I mean, it's hundred thirty-one thousand dollars out of what a hundred million or whatever they took in. There was a lot. I'm not sure. That <coughs> yeah, it was. For, uh, it's pathetic. What we typically get for um, Chapter ninety funds is pretty substantial at one hundred thirty-one. Well, Chapter ninety funds are pretty unsubstantial as well, and I mean everything's based on on road miles, not ability to pay or or anything. I just. They're missing, they're missing the big picture here completely. Uh, they made this new tax and they promoted it that it would help alleviate some of these things. I don't think this really helps that much. Where's the rest of the money going? Did you get taxed over a million dollars? You're looking at me? <laughs> I'm not a big no. fan of Beacon <laughs> Hill, but I don't vote for any of those people. So you know what? You make your bed, you sleep in it. That's what they do with your money. They give it to someone else. So you don't get to keep your money, spend it in your town. It goes to somewhere else. That's what happens. It's a redistribution of wealth. And I don't know who's wealthy. I'm not wealthy. <laughs> well, it's the millionaire tax. And it's only people earning over a million are paying this tax. But the money, where's it going? The millionaires are leaving the state. My clients are packing up and going to Florida. <laughs> Okay. Well, I, I feel like if we don't start to understand how these funds are getting calculated, we'll never have a say in it at all. I mean, we could just sit here and accept whatever pittance they want to throw away, but if this Chapter 90 allocation is any example of what will happen with the education side of this, again, they're going to be throwing us, you know, pennies on the dollar, you know, and unless we say something. This was promoted as a way to help alleviate the funding crisis in roads and education. I don't think it's alleviated anything in Groveland. Just saying. I thought it would fail. I thought it was obvious. Anybody, unless you have a brick and mortar business and you have to be in the Commonwealth, if you have an internet business or something that's personnel related, you can set your business up in Florida or New Hampshire across the border and you can have two residences and one domicile and you can pay your taxes in New Hampshire. Oh, they don't have an income tax. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about who pays the taxes. I'm talking about our town's share of this tax. Percentage of what? <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> suggesting that we might want to check into it a little bit. Okay. You want to do that? <laughs> Will you do that? You can do that. I'll do it with you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> I'd love to bash the state on the millionaire's tax, you know? If you don't like rich people, we can all be poor. We can't all be millionaires, but we can all be poor. The, the, the history's proven that. Jason. Mark, you want to chime in? Millionaire's tax? You're paying 9% income tax? None of my business. I'm far from that. Edward. Yeah, sure. Uh, when a millionaire's tax was proposed, we didn't learn from our neighboring state of Connecticut where the wealthy people started to move out. So they actually ended up with not that much, or ended up with less. So they're, they're leaving for states, Florida, New Hampshire. So they're going to do the same thing in Massachusetts. So you'll be, uh, you'll be thinking about leaving, uh, Dan? So you won't be affected by the millionaires? Thing? I, I, no, I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to get Section 8 housing and, and food stamps, and I'm going to hang out. <clears throat> Can't beat them, join them. Moving right along. Um, selectman time. I forgot to put something on here, so I'll uh, 
I'll start off selectman time. Um, I wanted to invite the town clerk to air to talk about um, election season. So I guess uh, nomination papers can be pulled and, and what um, not. And uh, I'd like to invite the uh, town clerk uh, to our next meeting and if she can update the town on um, vacancies, uh, terms that are expiring. Um, <coughs> Would have been better if it was at this meeting, but that's my bad. And uh, but uh, I think it's still timely if we do it in the middle of January, right? There's still time to pull nomination papers, I believe, by the end of January. I believe so. So I like her just to tell us uh, what terms are uh, are up, what open seats are open, uh, what um, elected boards need have vacancies, and just uh, give us some general information if uh, people uh, want to get involved and uh, run for office. <laughs> So could we add that to the next agenda? I will. We will together. Kathy. Um, yes, so you, I understand you pushed off the, my request for this agenda um, for the fire chief to discuss ways to regionalize services to the next agenda? That was more me oh, you. in okay. my conversations with the fire chief. The okay. fire chief is meeting with the um, other um, surrounding it, towns and putting together a proposal so that he can give you all the details at the meeting so that was more my fault for not communicating that more fully I discussed that with Rebecca and um, okay. and without him here I don't know that would have a pertinent meeting no, no, no. so it, was, it wasn't it wasn't any way a sure. kind of a absolutely a snub on you in any way no, it, it's just I, I talked to Rebecca and it's like is the chief going to be available without him here we're talking about something that's significant and I don't know. I don't know how good a conversation we'd right. have without. And so, a player. second request that I had that I know got kind of put to the side was, um, we are still a board of selectmen, and many towns have changed the name to select board, select board members. And I did say, wouldn't it be a good idea to at least bring it up as a discussion item at a board of selectmen meeting to understand what the name change would entail and whether or not we wanted to go forward with it? I mean. In light of the personnel policies and all the other forward-looking things that we've passed, I think, I believe this is the only board in town that is gender-specific in its name, I believe. We can add it to the agenda. We had some meetings that went over three hours, and one of them that, <laughs> right, that you posted. <laughs> so, you know, we could discuss all issues, and um, we can add that to the next agenda if you want to talk about it. Sure. You want it on the next agenda? Yeah, this agenda is pretty short, wouldn't you say? Agenda is very short th today. I was kind of egg wall in the holidays, so you know what? We have a light agenda this evening, and once in a while we got to have a light agenda. A you know, and, and, and I believe in the government that governs least, governs best, you know. It's, sure. So uh, the, the less I talk, the better off Groveland is. <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 so next agenda the Quote me on that. should it's be fine. <laughs> all right. That's all for now. Everyone has a voice here. Good. You know. <laughs> Talk about select board at the next meeting. Maybe we can call ourselves the illustrious ones or something, you know. I mean, uh, let's be creative. I, I hate following other people, you know. Let's just like let's dare to be different. Come up with your best ideas. All right, you know. <laughs> the great ones. I'll, 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 I'll sleep on it. I'll come up with my a top ten list, you know. Like sure. David Letterman. What else you got? That's, I think that's it for now. All right. J uh, Jason. I'm good. Mark, you want something on the next agenda? No, I'm good. Edward. Uh, <clears throat> no, I think I'm all set. Uh, other than maybe we, maybe we ought to put on the uh, Woody about tech again. We'll just uh, keep it up in the forefront. We can keep uh, adding that. You know, I don't know if we're going to get updates as we go, but certainly we should uh, prior to the vote get some information out there. Well, that'll, the meeting will be after the uh, uh, new report uh, meeting on the ninth, so uh, maybe think, we have some. I think they already made up their mind, didn't they? Wasn't that almost it? What's next? Um, 
correspondence. Anybody wants to read it? We have fiscal year 2024 fair share apportionment letter. And we have the city of Newburyport Whittier Info Night Flyer. What's the Night Flyer look like? It's about the building project. Zone in on that. I think this is important. This is, uh, this is big stuff. <laughs> Dan, you're upside down. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> <coughs> it's all right. He can rotate the camera. He can do anything with technology. All right. Tuesday, January the 9th, 6 to 8 p.m. at Knock Middle School, 70 Low Street, Newburyport. City of Newburyport is presenting an information session about the Whittier Tech building project. How will this impact Newburyport and other district communities? There you have it. Um, that's all we have. I showed up late and I leave early. I mean. <laughs> I think you figured it out. I, I did, you know. <laughs> say something. But someone else has uh, anything else. Uh, we have the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen will be on Tuesday. Another Tuesday. January 16th. How come? We have uh, Martin Luther King Day? Yeah. So we have uh, MLK Junior Day on Monday. So we'll be here on Tuesday, January the 16th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. And um, I can't think of any, everything. If anyone wants something on the agenda item, talk to Rebecca. I talk to Rebecca. We get together and we put together an agenda. So it doesn't have to be as late as this evening, but it can't be, you know, five hours. So uh, anybody who wants to uh, have some input in their government, feel free to. Um, with that, someone want to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Motion to adjourn at 7.35 p.m. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Happy New Year, everyone.